Good evening and welcome to the Cover One Buffalo Podcast. You are joining your host, Greg Thompson, tonight in the fifth in our series on the 2020 Buffalo Bills NFL Draft Class. Tonight, it's a Kicker Palooza special. The kicker from Georgia Southern, Tyler Bass, and to dive into the intricacies of the kicking world, none other than expert Russell Brown. Russ, how are we doing? You know, as the guy with the longevity, the the experience on the staff, I, I just want to know how in the world did I get put on kicker assignments? <laughs> I mean, I don't understand. I got to talk this up with my boss, but this is insane. But I mean, Tyler Bass, is he related to Ronnie Bass? I just want to know from it Remember the Titans. The, it enhanced the value. I, I think that it's it going to make things better. Got to call him uh, Sunshine. And, you know, I, I think that a lot of fans were a little crazy. I, I think that some people overdo it and we, we talked about this in our series when we were going over Zach Moss and the idea of that you can get a running back anytime I think people assume that every kicker or punter is an undrafted free agent and yeah. that many good kickers are drafted like you know that now I think that it should always be day three I think it should always be the tail end of day three um you know I think sometimes people get a little crazy before that but a, a sixth round pick is pretty rarely a impact player from a roster standpoint and when you flip around who the bills got after uh tyler bass and that you're able to still add an isaiah hodgins you're still able to add a dane jackson um i think it certainly makes you feel a little bit better that that it was certainly worthwhile but you know when pick 188 came up and it was a, a kicker that came aboard i i can't lie i, I was a little surprised <laughs> yeah i was too man I, I know there were some struggles this past year uh with hauschka and, and just the, the everything that was kind of going on um really the last two years but uh yeah, I it's mean, Henry Anderson's fault. Ever since that dirty cheap shot, his back's <laughs> been messed up, and he's never been the same. I'll, I'll never forgive him. Yeah, no, and it's been kind of a struggle as far as the kicking game goes. And I mean, I don't want to say it, but uh, as Bills fans know, in uh, big games, if you you don't have the kicker doing his job, then uh, it might cost you something. So uh, I think it, it's kind of important to to kind of go down this avenue and, and take a look at, at, a, at a prospect that maybe you can develop into your future starting kicker. And, and who knows, maybe you get a, a Venetary out of it who is kicking you game-winning field goals in the AFC title game. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, going into this, um, everyone had to be realistic that competition for Stephen Hauschka was necessary. Mm-hmm. You're talking about a guy who's turning 35, who's been – materially lesser these last two years and i you know i I was much like myself (laughs) you know hey (laughs) we're we're all trying to be our best selves um you know i I was half joking about the henry anderson thing but honestly ever since then it's been a a material noticeable difference you're talking about a guy that in his first season at buffalo he broke the nfl record for consecutive 50 plus yard field goals and that you know really endeared himself he was house money that that's what everybody called him it was just an automatic every single time and you know now you're talking about two straight years in the 70 percent range from a field goal standpoint that's just not good enough anymore mm-hmm. and um i i'm not a kicking expert by any means i'm barely L, you know, legible from a draft standpoint, period, on the positions that um, the Bills need. So I have no background on kickers other than one experience. And that I joined you guys down at the Senior Bowl and was, you know, in Mobile and checking out the practices, had an awesome time being able to kind of watch everything. And on one of the days when they were switching over to the, you know, field goal practice, it was Rodrigo Blankenship from Georgia. And it's obviously everybody watched the games and saw the rec specs. They saw hot rod out there and that, you know, made some clutch kicks in some big games. And that, you know, at that point, people are joking about, you know, you know, Sebastian Janikowski and he's going to be a first and second round kicker. And, you know, I'm ready to watch him and he's out there and it's a little windy and he's struggling. I think he goes like three of eight, puts a couple of them short and, you know, misses wide left and right here and there. But it was 53-yard attempt. So, you know, it's understandable. It wasn't going to be great. Mm-hmm. And then we're watching it with myself, Sal Capaccio, who covers everybody uh, listening here, knows him from WGR and from the news and uh, Sal, the Sal Sports podcast, um, and Kevin Ferguson, who is Reed Ferguson's dad. And at the time, Blake Ferguson was there at the Senior Bowl. Um, and he's a, a long snapping expert, obviously, with two sons now in the NFL as long snappers. Um, and he was watching the long snapper that was competing with Blake uh, there. And all of a sudden these kicks start hitting the bleachers. And I mean, we're talking 53 yard attempts and putting them into the bleachers. It would have been good from 60 and over and over and over again. 
And it's this little scrappy dude who's way smaller than everyone else on the field. And I was asking, who is this kid? And it's Tyler Bass from Georgia Southern. And I watch him go seven of eight from 53 yards. And like I said, all of them would have been good from 60, just crushing the ball. And lo and behold, 10 feet in front of us as we're doing that is Heath Farwell, the special teams coordinator for uh, the Bills. And I, I, Kevin and I talked about it and said, man, to make that kind of impression in person while the special teams coordinator is sitting there scribbling notes feverishly, I, man, that's a good first impression from a job interview standpoint. And lo and behold, they pick him. So it, it's just funny. That's my only experience from a kicking standpoint. It happens to be a guy they end up picking here. So um, I've been a big advocate of it since then, just because um, the only thing I've ever seen him do is crush long field goals. So I'm assuming he's never going to miss ever again. Um, but <laughs> let us know a little bit about what you saw from the statistics and, and what he's done at Georgia Southern. Yeah. So I, I pulled up his stats from SIS and I, I do remember him from the senior bowl. I mean, I remember him just, crushing uh the ball and uh you know through his time at sis or through his time at, at georgia southern and in the stats that i have uh, from sis um yeah you know he's 20 for 28 as far as field goals but extra points go i mean he's pretty damn close to being automatic um and from 40 to 49 yards he was eight for 13 um, and then from 30 to 39 yards he was six for eight but I was a little surprised to see this. He was actually 0 for 1 from 50 yard or more. So that was just for this past year. Um, I can't pull up for his career, but clearly he took a step back. If you look at that just overall field goal percentage for 2019, he missed eight field goals compared to previous years, um, which was a, a little different. But I think obviously that performance at the Senior Bowl and, and people being able to see that was, hey, okay, we can take this guy, we can develop him. And I think that's the thing you're getting coaching from Georgia Southern compared to the Buffalo bills. I mean, you're getting an NFL special teams coordinator going to coach you and, and, and special teams coaches taking a look at how you're driving into the football, how you're kicking it, how's it coming off your foot and those types of things. Where's your toe pointed? Where's your foot pointed? Um, and I'm no, you know, I'm no kicking specialist by any means. It's, I don't watch him. So I don't, you know, I don't know exactly what his form is like, but for them to draft him in the sixth round with the ninth pick 69, um, then I think it's, it's certainly something, uh, worth monitoring and I think you know he can certainly come in and compete and it wouldn't surprise me if we get into August September and he's the starting kicker um you know I certainly think an investment from a draft pick standpoint matters you know mm -hmm. I think that's different than just a UDFA and somebody coming aboard last year every single draft pick that the Bills made made the roster um, the mm -hmm. opening day roster of the 53 I think Brandon Bean values his uh draft picks I think that the you know, they showed his hand last year. Um, they knew they had something in Chase McLaughlin and they tried to carry both. They ended up having to uh, juggle things around. They had to wave him. He got picked up initially by the Chargers, then got released and they put in a waiver claim for him. And nobody ever disclosed who was going to be released. But from context that, that, that people had poked around, I think they were going to release Steven Hauschka, and I think that they were going to bring back Chase McLaughlin. He ended up getting uh, snagged by the Colts, and now he's held on to that job, and or uh, maybe the other way around. Maybe it's the Colts, and now he held on with the Chargers, um, but now has that job full-time. And I think they showed that, hey, they, it wasn't good enough, and you saw it in that playoff game uh, against the Texans that if they felt a little bit more confident in having that le leg that Hauschka had two, three, four years ago, they probably make a field goal attempt in one of those spots late in the game and that they're maybe they're in a different scenario now. So um, I think, you know, obviously a lot of Bills fans are seeing the the viral videos going around mm -hmm. um, from Tyler Bass where he does this crazy no step 50 yarder where he has his left foot planted and simply swings around with his right foot, not stepping into it and hits a, a 50 yarder and then does a one step on a 60 yarder. Um, so obviously you're talking about an incredible amount of power, yeah. uh, especially for a guy who's like five, eight, <laughs> like he's, yeah, not he's not, he's not a big dude. He's shorter than me and I'm not that big. Yeah. You know, so not a huge guy in that, you know, able to just drive that kind of power. He's still got to do it when it matters. It's hard to replicate pressure situations at camp and preseason. Um, but I think if he comes out, obviously my one experience was phenomenal, but um, if he comes out and is able to put on 
the show that he did in in the Senior Bowl and, and what I saw in person, um, I think he is going to be the kicker for this yeah. team going forward. And I think that it's going to take a pretty significant collapse from him of just showing that he doesn't have the the mental fortitude to be able to hold on to the pressure situation. Um, but they, they brought him in here to take this job from Hauschka. Yeah, and I think that's the key thing is, you know, hopefully we can get football going and, and he can learn from Steven Hauschka and he can get kind of the mindset of what you need uh, to have when you're in those situations and just kind of learning. And I think it's something as we talk about with other guys like Jake Fromm and, and Isaiah Hodgins and even Zach Moss, just having some of these younger guys in the locker room, learning certain things. I think with Tyler Bass, I know it's just a kicker, but like you mentioned, there's a lot of high pressure situations that he's going to have to replicate in practice, in a game, and he's going to have to come through in the clutch. And just because he was 0 for 1 from 50 yards or more this past season, that's, I mean, that's not necessarily his fault. He's not the one getting the opportunity to go out there and, and kick the ball. So um, those viral videos, you definitely have to check them out on YouTube or find them on Twitter or maybe even on Instagram. But yeah, it's very uh, it's entertaining to see. And it's impressive because to have that type of leg strength to just yeah stand still and just kick the ball 50 yards. That's, I mean, that's incredible. So um, yeah, it's, it's an interesting uh, draft pick. I, I, I think I've talked about it before. If you can get some special teamers in the draft, especially on day three, that just helps your team. That's a value. And I mean, this is a starting spot. You have to fill it one way or the other. I mean, you're not going to have Josh Allen out there kicking the ball. I don't think so. Um, you got to have some, some value there. And I think Bass can bring that and, and hopefully it works out. Well, and I think you again. You know, each each time we've gone through these series, I've talked about the the financial implications, the roster construction side of things, and that if you're able to add someone you can trust and you get them on a four year rookie deal, that's a significant savings. You know, we're talking mm -hmm. about two three million dollars a year for most kickers. High end are, are now getting four and five million dollars, and some of the the high What's end Hausch kickers. What's Hauschka's deal? Do you know? Um, it, it, the, right around three million, and they can get two and change back from that to be able to do so. There's some, you know, it's not the reason that they're going to do it, but there's some yeah. material benefit if Bass wins this job. They do get a, a material amount of money back that uh, is able to help them out. So it, it certainly is something that would be a bonus if they're able to do that. And I think we're going to see. Uh, two-headed competitions in both paths that you're going to see Hauschka versus Tyler Bass. You're going to see Kari Vedvik versus uh, Corey Bohorquez in that Vedvik now it's been reported is solely focused on punting. I know he tried to do everything last year and, um, you know, flamed out pretty, pretty strongly from a field goal kicking standpoint. Um, yeah. But I think certainly has a lot of potential in what you saw a rocket leg uh, capability. So if he really focuses on solely punting, um, I think there's a potential there that we could have two new specialists for the Bills and that, you know, right now, if I had to call it, I think it's more likely that the Bills kicker is going to be Tyler Bass and the Bills punter is going to be Kari Bedvik. And that um, that is an interesting dynamic with how strong the rest of this roster is that you could have two unproven yeah. rookie type guys uh, in some pretty serious situations. Well, and like you mentioned, I mean, with Tyler Bass, if you get rid of Hauschka, you you can clear up $2 million and some change. I mean, you look at some of the, the deals that are out there for some of these, you know, if, let's just pick a position, receiver. You get some veteran minimums on receivers. Devin Funches went for practically nothing to Green Bay. Uh, Geronimo Allison went to Detroit for basically nothing. So you can get a depth receiver, a number four, or number five, that has, you know, production in years past it's only going to benefit you down the line. Or even if you talk about the, you know, running back position, if you're looking for maybe a little bit more of a, a pass catcher to be, you know, that third down guy. So I think it helps you in the long run because it's going to open up a roster spot. It's going to free up some money and you can spend it elsewhere. And it doesn't have to just be offense. It could be anywhere. So um, as far as, you know, Bass being like maybe a potential kickoff guy, that's a possibility to do. He had 198 uh, touchbacks on his 268 kickoffs. So in college, so he, he can do the kickoff duties. He's obviously going to be the, the field goal guy. So uh, the place kicker. So I think it's, you know, um, I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see what happens and how it, it boils down. But I think he, you know, brings you something uh, and probably a lot more is just from youth and overall leg strength uh, compared to Hauschka. Well, and I looked up the numbers here just to confirm. Um, obviously, you're not going to see a release prior to training camp. So it's right. not going to be a pre 
June 1st release. So after June 1st, it's uh, $2.4 million that they would save by releasing them. And you'd have a $600,000 uh, dead cap hit, which is obviously very negligible. So um, $2.4 million does matter. That That's a, that's a legitimate amount of money. So um, like I said, it doesn't mean it's automatic. I think that there's still a level of trust with Steven Hauschka that Tyler Bass is going to have to overcome that especially a guy like Sean McDermott who believes in, in that kind of thing so strongly and that um, Stephen Hauschka had been a special teams captain at one point. So um, someone who has some locker room cachet and has some uh, trust in that locker room, uh, Bass is going to have to show out and show that capability that, that he's had in these other workouts and to get himself drafted, uh, but certainly has that potential. And I think it's an exciting opportunity to maybe have some some new fresh blood there and in, in someone who – with the offense the Bills are trying to put together here, just that weapon that knowing as soon as you cross midfield, you've got a chance to score, and you don't have to get to the 30-yard line to feel good about it. And that's such a huge difference in that, you know, anytime you get to the 40 or 45, you know you're in range to give it a shot. Um, I think that that changes Josh Allen's dynamic of what he's looking for. I think that changes what, you know, you get into a third and 12 at the 45-yard line all of a sudden that's a different kind of play than mm -hmm. what it is. If you know, you have to punt if you don't complete it. Um, and that, you know, just being in that range to give that option uh, is just another weapon to be able to take a look at and let's Brian Dable and Josh Allen make different decisions with the ball. So um, I'm looking forward to having that. I hope that it's bass and I hope that this draft investment gives them that confidence to do it. Yeah, for sure. Not, I'm I'm sorry. I'm just looking up, uh, you know, some free agents that are out there. You know, Taylor Gabriel out of uh, he got cut by the Bears, 29 years old. Um, you know, I don't know. Maybe that that's somebody that you'll look at. Um, you know, I'm just looking at random names. Paul Richardson. Oh, here I'll, I'll give a number. Um, if you take the cap savings from Trent Murphy, which is a little over eight million, eight point oh five. Yeah. And you take the cap savings from Stephen Hauschka, which is two point four million. That ten point five million is probably Everson Griffin. Um, That's and that, exactly the name I was looking at. If you're going to be able to, you know, play some some you know money ball here and, and shuffle those things around, give me Trent Murphy's money and Stephen Hauschka's money and turn that into an Everson Griffin, and we're playing ball. Uh, so that's the kind of thing that hopefully this frees up to let them take a look at. Yeah, and you get a guy like Griffin. I mean, I don't know if he necessarily played under Leslie Frazier in Minnesota. He, he did. His first four years in Minnesota were Frazier's four years as head coach. So His it works first, out perfectly. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it works out perfectly, especially if you talk about maybe just a, a one-year deal helps a guy like an A.J. Epinesa. I think that's that's a home run right there. So that's something they should do. And I've been saying cut Trent Murphy for like <laughs> seven months now. So. Well, there you go. We can now get the drum beat going. So um, it, thank you guys for checking this out. Um, obviously, this is the the fifth in the series here. We've got um, one show for every draft pick that we're going through here. Appreciate all the, the time from Russ and all the time from Christian being able to go through each of these shows. Hope you guys are enjoying them, understand what we're, we're doing here. Any final thoughts for the people on new Georgia Southern kicker for the Buffalo Bills, Tyler Bass? I, I don't have pretty much of much. I mean, it's <laughs> probably your future starting kicker. So, uh, you know, I appreciate everybody that's uh, been reaching out as far as my, my draft guide that went, uh, that was kind of a spur of the moment thing. I wasn't planning on doing that. So, uh, for everybody that, that checked that out, really appreciate it. Um, and I, I kind of thinking of maybe doing something a little bigger and better next year. So, especially with how this one kind of turned out, it was, uh, literally it took me a week to do the input, all the data and just format it. And then I just dropped it. So it kind of worked out. Uh, but yeah, so I appreciate everybody doing that and, uh, you know, find me on Twitter at Russell NFL draft. Appreciate you bringing me on. You guys have been doing great with this, this Buffalo podcast. It's always uh, great to listen to. It's something I listen to every time you drop a new episode. So, uh, smash the follow button, subscribe to the cover one NFL draft show. And of course your show. Appreciate it, man. Yeah. And I, I can't, you know, echo that enough that the, the cover one draft show is fantastic. You and Christian have a great dynamic together. It's a lot of fun. Uh, and, and this is the time of year where things kind of reset. So I, I, I hope and wish you guys uh, a moment to relax and to be able to kind of nah. get your minds right. But I, I know you well enough to know that you're ridiculous maniacs and already diving into the 2021 material. So um, make sure you guys are checking that out. Follow Russ, Russ NFL Draft. Uh, check everything that's going on there. Appreciate your time tonight, Russ. This is Cover One Buffalo, and we are out.